So what is your, uh, what is your reflection on, on systems thinking? Did you, did you notice the connection when, when the delivery boy came and handed over the food to you? Did you think of all the connections behind the delivery of the food? Did you think of, of, of him connected to the two-wheeler? The two-wheeler is connected to uh, the manufacturing industry. The manufacturing industry is connected to, to making vehicles. That is connected to, to fuel. That is connected to getting fuel out of the earth. That is connected to pollution. So every time you order food, there is pollution. Did you connect? Did you connect him to to the hotels that are making the food, the restaurants that are making the food, the grain that is being distributed to the restaurants, the farmers who are making the grain, who are who are farming the grain, and the connection to the rain, without which you cannot have grain. And and if we pollute the earth too much then there is no rain. If there is no rain, there is no farming. If there is no farming, there is no grain. If there is no grain, there is no food. If there is no food, there is no restaurant and there is no delivery. See how beautifully it fits in. I may have been smiling right through, but I was smiling more from, from the chain of events that is unfolding rather than smiling at the thought itself. A simple act like delivering food has got so many connections and that's the beauty of system thinking. Personally, for me in my life, system thinking has worked to understand problems like I maintain, right? It always helps me to understand my problems. If the water doesn't come to my house one day, instead of, instead of getting angry and throwing things around, I know that there is a reason, try and find out if I can improve that situation, find out the reason for, for the water not coming on a particular day. So, every, and, and we know that every one of our actions has a particular cause, effect, so many things in the system, right? So many things. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that many of you have started to get interested in this fascinating subject. Before the end of the course, I'll also tell you lots of books on system thinking. A lot of authors who have written on system thinking. I think I already told you uh, the name of the book, Fifth Discipline by Peter Senge, right? And um, so therefore, let's, let's see if, if, if we can discuss more and more of system thinking together. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm also wondering whether, whether you, you, read, uh, you read any more about the big picture. One of the suggestions is to, is to sit down, take a personal calendar, right? And write down the next three years, three years, three years, three years, go on up to the next 15 years, have that calendar right in front of you and, and chart your life over the next 15 years in, in three year, uh, in three year um, divisions, right? And find out whether there's any change, anything that you can control in those 15 years and find out if there's any new innovation you want to have connected to what you want to achieve in the next 15 years. The more important thing is if something untoward happens, something that makes you sad happens, go back to this picture and look at this picture. And look at this picture and say, yes, I know something terrible has happened today, but my big picture still tells me that there is reason for hope. Remember the one vehicle that all of us must own is the helicopter. Whatever we own by way of car, cycle, doesn't matter. The helicopter is the vehicle for us to look at the big picture from 10,000 feet up. So, big picture, system thinking, and also the design principles. I don't know how many of you have been fascinated by the design principles. 
but the design principles are our rules. Apparently, there are four types of fear. One fear is, is the fear of death, all of us know. Second is the fear of loneliness, being alone. I'm always afraid that I'll be alone. The third is the fear of leading a meaningless life, completely meaningless life. What if my life is totally without meaning? The fourth, strangely, is the fear of freedom. You must be wondering, what is this? Why am I talking about the fear of freedom? That is fear of having complete freedom without any rules at all. What is the connection between fear of having complete freedom and the design principles of nature? Because when you say fear of freedom, it means that I fear, I'm afraid of living without any rules. But what is the design principles of nature stipulate? They stipulate rules for product, right? Rules, rules for making products. And they are the umbrella rules for making products. If you didn't have the rules, then you have complete freedom to do whatever you want. And when you have complete freedom to do whatever you want, look what happens to the world. Which is why their fear of freedom, which is not having any rules, I'm connecting it to having rules by way of those 10 design principles, which says that before I make anything, can I evaluate my design against those rules? Brilliant, right? If you, you, you know, once, once you understand something, you can draw connections, connections from almost anywhere. The way we saw it in intersections. Look, everything is getting connected now. So systems thinking, big picture, design principles, intersections, everything seems to be connected, everything. And this is what I'm going to do over the next three, three classes. Constantly try and connect, 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 connect. So at the end of about eight classes, all we have got to read is one line. And that line will lead us to everything that we have learned up to now. As far as now is concerned, I'm going to be talking about a very important aspect of systems thinking which helps you practice systems thinking, which is understanding consequences. I think it's, it's easy enough to understand what is the meaning of this. It's simply that understanding what will be the result of my actions. There are three types of consequences, short term consequences, long term consequences, and anyone guessing the third type of consequence? unintended consequence, something that I don't intend to do. I can talk about it all day long, but I'm not going to speak about it because I'm going to let you start thinking about consequences. And many times what happens is, many times what happens in order to, in order to satisfy an immediate need, in order to not wait for something, I go ahead, let's say, for instance, not being lazy to, to exercise. It's a luxury not to exercise. So most of us fall into the trap of not exercising. The short term consequence of not exercising is happiness. Nice fun, right? Nothing, no lots and lots of time. You don't have to worry about, about slogging it out. No sweat, no, 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 uh, no having to get up early in the morning and walk and all that. Complete freedom to do what you want. Read newspaper all day. Long-term consequence, long-term consequence, you know what it is. Health, diabetes, obesity, all sorts of illnesses. What do we do? We sacrifice the long-term consequence for short-term joy. Now you take this principle and you connect it to almost everything that you do, not studying for the exams. Short-term, long-term, right? Eating fast food. Short term, long term. Making, getting angry with friends, or, or, you know, just like that. Short term, long term. Um, road rage. One favorite topic for me. Road rage. I have been, I have been, um, you know, uh, quite, quite, a, quite an angry driver on the road. Only now, after learning the consequences, 
uh, of system thinking, I have started to stop getting angry. It's so easy to get angry and get into trouble on the road, right? So, but then you must be wondering, Shiva, why are you not talking about, about unintended consequence? Yes, of course. What is the, what for instance is the unintended consequence of not exercising? Anyone? Short term we know, long term we know. What is the unintended consequence of not exercising? What happens if I get ill? My family members suffer. It's an unintended, unintended consequence, right? I never wanted them to suffer. But they suffer because I did not exercise and because I did not exercise, I became obese. And because I became obese, I have they have to put the hospital bills. Look at that. It's so beautiful, right? And now for almost everything, we can look at unintended consequences. So the question that we look at when you look at consequences are, what are the short term and long term consequences? And so this is what we do, right? Can, can, we, can we go ahead in the morning, get up in the morning and do that walking? Just tolerate that short term pain for long term gain. This is the link to, to, to a video. It's called Cats in Borneo. I want you to actually pause the video now and watch that. When you watch the video, I don't want to spoil the fun for you, but when you watch the video, you will be able to perfectly understand short term, long term and, and unintended consequence. So next time, one of the ways, just like the big picture calendar that I spoke to you about, one of the ways to help you understand unintended consequence is to write down something that you want to do, like studying or exercise or, or binging on fast food or something like that. Next column, you say short term and then long term and then unintended. I'm not saying don't have fun eating, eating um, you know, fast food. I also love fast food. All of us like it. I'm only saying that when you're starting to get become a habit, uh, when you're starting to become habituated to fast food, then it's a good idea to pause and say what are the long-term, short-term, unintended consequences. The other bonus for knowing this, uh, this, this, this habit of unintended consequence is that you know why something happens to you. When you are obese, instead of constantly looking at the mirror and shouting at yourself, you know that it happened because you did not exercise, so you understand. If you are diabetic, like I am, when you look in the mirror, you know that that the reason for for diabetes is because you you uh, you did not eat healthy food, right? So therefore, we understand things like medical things like obesity and and diabetes and all that, and that's why I think it's important to know short term, long term, and unintended consequences. <laughs>